Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of Crafting with Class. Today, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Misty stamping tool versus the Diamond Presses stamping tool. I will be comparing everything that I do with the Misty and see how it works on Diamond Presses tool. And I'll give you my honest opinion about everything. So let's get started. Let me go ahead and show you what you get in the accessory kit. So the comes with an instruction booklet for basic instructions. In the kit, you get the stamp platform. You get the stamp cleaner. You get the paddle to like press and rub in your stamps. There it is. And then get a washi tape roll. And you get two large chamois cloths in turquoise and pink. Let me go ahead and give you a quick walkthrough of what I currently have. So this is the Hampton Arts Stamp Perfect stamping tool. I would recommend this one every day of the week, twice on Sundays, but unfortunately it's no longer available in the US. I also have the mini Misty and then the original Misty. So for our purposes, I'm going to be using the original Misty to compare it to, like I said, the Stamp Perfect is not available in the US. But to my knowledge, it may still be available in the UK and it is my preferred one. Let's take a look at the features of each one, starting with the diamond press tool. The stamping area for the diamond press tool is seven by seven and a quarter. Overall, it measures just short of eight by eight. It has a foam pad along the backside for cushioning and it has an acrylic plate on the top that is supported by two hinges, which is what allows it to open and close. Inside it has a recessed area where you would put your paper in and then it has a divot along the side to help you open it easier. Now let's take a look at the original Misty. Now there is a Misty 2.0 that has a couple of upgrades and I will let you know what those are. First, the area that you have to work with on the Misty is six and a half by eight and a half. The overall dimensions of the Misty is 10 inches by eight inches. It also has the acrylic plate on the top. The markings are etched so they won't wipe away. It has the three hinges that allow to open and close the stamp platform. You have the foam on the back that is magnetized. So there's magnets underneath because you get a magnet bar. And this is what, this is what holds your paper onto your Misty tool. It also comes with a foam insert, not the one you see here. This is an additional purchase. The Misty 2.0 has an acrylic cover on top of those rulers on the top, the side, and the bottom. And it also has a little divot that makes it easier to be able to open the lid. I forgot to mention that on the diamond press, the markings, the grid markings on the lid are not etched like they are on the Misty. They're just printed, so it may wear down over time. Let's take a look at the chamois it comes with. When I unwrapped it, it is huge. To me, this is too much to work with. This is how I normally have mine. So it is in this salt cellar and uh, I use the Gina K tidy towel. I love it because uh, it gets really dirty. And this is an old towel that I've had for years, but it still works. Um, I use it with the Hero Arts Ultra Clean. These are my two favorite combinations. The Ultra Clean absolutely gets everything squeaky clean, not just the stamps, but the tools. I don't spray the stamps ever. I just spray the tidy tool, making sure that it's stamped first. Make, always make sure it's stamped before you use it. And then I put it in here. And so I leave it open just a little bit when I store it, just so that it doesn't get all moldy and smelly and gross. So with this towel, I'm going to use it just to see how it compares to the tidy towel because that is my MVP. And looking at it, it is one quarter <laughs> I just need one quarter of it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off basically one of those little squares. So in essence, you're getting eight little tidy towels or stamp chamois or whatever you want to call it out of these two that they give you, which is amazing because they should last quite a long time. So as I said, my Gina K one I've had for years. I have, as you just saw, my standby because I'm gonna be replacing it soon since it's starting to wear down a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these, the rest of these away. I will cut them, the rest of them down later, but I feel like you can easily get 
eight from both of the sheets that are included. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back in the little pouch that it came in, which is a nice little place to store it. However, I just would caution you to just leave a little bit of air just so that it doesn't get all gross. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in the little bowl. So I've wet it, made it damp, and then I'm spraying it with the stamp cleaner that came with the diamond press one. So I will also be trying that out side by side to get a good comparison. Let's take a closer look at the two chamois. So the Diamond Press chamois is very smooth to the touch, very soft. The Tidy Towel has little bumps. So as you can see, it's a little more textured. I actually like this and prefer this because I feel like it gets into all the nooks and crannies of the stamp to clean it. Okay, I'm gonna be using this very old stamp set. I chose it because it is not photopolymer, it's an acrylic stamp. So these tend to be a little problematic sometimes. Uh, it's very old, I don't think it's available anymore. Um, but I also picked it because it has very, very detailed images. I am using the same paper for both, Nina 80 pound. And so I've labeled at the top just to keep track of which one is which. I'll also be using my go-to Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink in Obsidian. Let's go ahead and start with the Misty. So I have my paper. I'm going to put it in the button in the corner and I'm going to put the magnet on top to hold it down. I'm going to pick up the stamp with the lid of the Misty. I'm going to ink it up with the Gina K Amalgam Ink. I'm going to make sure it's got good coverage and then I'm going to stamp it down on the paper. I'm going to use one that I use normally. So I'm going to press that down, open the Misty. And so I missed a spot. So I'm just going to put a little more pressure. And here you can see a crisp image. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the Diamond Press platform. So what I decided to do was use an old Cricut mat. I re-stickied it. I put some uh, purple tape on the back just to hold it down onto that plastic um, base because again, this is not magnetic. So this is gonna hold my paper down. And so I'm just lining it up, making sure it butts against that lip on both of those edges. I added some washi tape to the bottom to hold that down. And then I removed the liner uh, cover. Now I was doing this just to try to see if it would work. And spoiler alert, this was amazing. I definitely recommend this edition. If you don't have an old Cricut mat, I will show you what you can use instead. So let me go ahead and add my paper to the corner. So I'm butting it up to the corner. I'm placing the stamp where I want it to stamp. And then I'm gonna pick it up with the lid of the Diamond Press stamp platform. I'm going to go ahead and ink it up with the Gina K Amalgam ink as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the lid. I'm gonna use the little stamp press that it comes with. And I have to say, I really like it. And oh my goodness, look at that crisp image. Really, really good image. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare. So I'm gonna take it off the mat. And so here you can see the diamond press on the left and on the right was the Misty and really not much of a difference. They both did the job and stamped the image well. So now I'm going to go ahead and wipe the stamp clean. So again, the cleaner is taking off all of the ink off the stamp and off the lid as well, cleans it very nicely. Now I wanted to try some of the longer images, the taller images, tall and skinny, which sometimes can also be a little problematic and a sentiment. So I'm inking, inking that up and pressing it down. I'm using the little hockey puck tool and there it is. Now there's a little bit light on the sentiment, but that might be the stamp, but the light post stamped perfectly fine. All right, so let's go ahead and clean that off and move on to see how it does on the diamond press. I have the stamps ready. I'm picking them up with the lid of the stamp press. I'm gonna go ahead and ink up both of those images and then I'm gonna stamp it down or press down with the little tool that it comes with. And I have to tell you, I really like this tool a lot. It feels great in the hand. So again, that little sentiment, 
um, needed some more ink, but you know, as with most images, you will usually need to ink them up more than once, but this was good enough. So let's go ahead and take a look and compare at both of them. So both of them stamped great. Try a color layering stamp. So I got this one from Hero Arts and I'm just going to do the little um, tree line. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the first layer. This is only a two layer stamp, so not superly complicated. I'm going to use Distress Oxides for this. And I'm gonna pick it up first with the diamond press stamp press. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it up. And this stamp is brand new and I did prep it, but still it left a little bit of gaps. So I had to go in with the stamp pad quite a few times, but that's also the nature of distress oxide. So as you can see, missed a spot and um, I kept missing spots. So I needed to go over with this particular stamp several times. So I went ahead and re-inked it. So I added more ink to the stamp and making sure that, but as you can see, it leaves a little bit of uh, empty spots anyway. And so I needed to really press down harder, I felt with this particular stamp. So going in with my fingers and doing a little bit of CPR. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the second layer. So I'm gonna peel off that first one, and cleaned it off. And now I have the second layer on. I'm gonna pick it up with the lid. And this time I'm going to stamp it with a darker green ink. And I guess I should have done it the opposite way. So this should have been the lighter layer, but it's okay. We're just playing right now and testing things out. So I went ahead and really inked it up. I'm going to press with the little press tool and that gives a pretty good image. I'm gonna go ahead and ink it up or press down, I should say. I'm gonna press down on the little spots that could have been better, but overall this was not a bad one. So we're gonna go ahead and call that one good. So I'll go ahead and clean off my stamp and then we'll try this on the Misty. So now on the Misty, I've picked up the stamp with the lid and I am making sure that that corner of the paper is in the corner of the Misty. So I'm inking this up really well with the same inks. I'm pressing down on it with my hockey puck little tool. And again, it's little spots that are missing. So that's not unheard of. Uh, it's very common with especially these type of stamps that uh, have a lot of uh, blank space, right? They're solid stamps. Now, my paper shifted, if you could see, so it did kind of mess up the image a little bit, but because of the nature of the image, it didn't really, you know, make too bad of a problem. So that's one of the things with the Misty is that even though you have the magnet, the paper can shift if you're not paying attention that it's always in the corner. So be careful with that. So I went ahead and stamped it down, pressed it a little bit, and that did the trick. And so both of them look very good. Stamped, both of them stamped very well. My next experiment, I wanted to try a border stamp. So this is a clear border stamp from Sunny Studios. So I'm gonna first try it out on the diamond press. I'm gonna pick it up with the lid. And as you can see, you can go ahead and use either the right side, no, use it on the right or use it on the left hand side. So you, it doesn't, it's not a tool specifically for any particular uh, left-handed or right-handed person, crafter. So I went ahead and stamped it up. I'm re-inking the stamp. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the tool and press it in. And there you can see on the second one, it looks great. On the Misty, I'm doing the same thing. So I am inking up the stamp. And I'm using, again, my Gina K Amalgam ink. So I'm using the tool to press it down. And I'm gonna press down with my fingers for any parts that needed a little bit more ink on. And then I'm gonna do it a second time, just like I did on the diamond press. And in both situations, in both cases, they both stamped really well, as you can see there. 
for my next experiment, I wanted to try a six by six background step. So I cut a piece of paper to six by six and I'm getting the clear background stamp aligned to the paper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up with the lid of the diamond pressed stamp. Uh, and I'm going to use the um, washi tape that came with it. So just in case you don't have, you know, the mat and this is how you would normally use it. Now I did cut the tape in half because it was a little bit wide for my liking, but that just means I'll get more tape out of it, right? So win-win. <laughs> so I went ahead making sure that it's lined up, that it's butt into the right, right? To the top left corner. And I'm going to go ahead and ink up the stamp. Now, because this is a background stamp, it does usually take a little bit more elbow grease to really get it all stamped. So as you can see, I did miss a few spots, but again, that's definitely not something uncommon. Usually, as I mentioned before, you have to um, reapply the ink two or three times until you get the you know the image um, as you like. So I'm going ahead and pressing down and there's a few, that's a much better, much better impression, but there's a couple places that needed a little bit more work. All right, so here I am cleaning off the stamp and again, the cleaner, and I'm, I have not reapplied any cleaner. I'm still using the same sprays that I did in the beginning and it cleaned up the stamp beautifully. All right, so now on the Misty, I'm doing the same thing. So I am inking up the stamp I'm going to use my tool to press down on the on the stamp. And again, I missed a few spots. Like I said, that's totally normal. So I'm just gonna press down on those that needed a little bit more pressure. I'm gonna re-ink the stamp and I'm gonna press down on it one more time. And look, I grabbed the, <laughs> the diamond press tool just because I really liked it and now I'm like getting used to it. So there it is, much better. For my next experiment, I'm going to flip this paper over onto the other side and I'm going to try a red rubber stamp. So I wasn't sure if this was going to take red rubber because of the depth of, you know, where you put the stamps in the first place. I inked it up and stamped it down use the little tool to press it down and miss the eyes but when I went back and pressed it the image was perfection it was absolutely crisp clean wonderful so it did work on that continuing with the trials I wanted to see if a red rubber background stamp would work so I went ahead and prepared it picked it up with the lid and inked it up so I was again a little concerned, especially because this is a big stamp and the red rubber are, you know, thick materials. So I was a little bit hesitant because I noticed that it was very bulky. It did miss a few spots because I wasn't pressing hard. But once I pressed a little harder, the impression was fabulous. But look at how thick it is in the middle. So I am just a little concerned that the hinge may somehow break or snap or something. So I don't know that I would use a background red rubber cling stamp in here. Um, that's not how I use it anyway, normally. So I that's my one caveat on that one. For my final test, I wanted to give it the red ink test because red ink is notorious for not coming off the stamp. So I took a clear stamp, I inked it up. This is Hero Arts Royal Red, I believe it's called, and stamped great. So now I'm taking the uh, chamois and cleaned it off, but nope, as you can see, <laughs> the red is still on the stamp. So I'm putting it there so you can see how it's still red. So unfortunately, it did not completely remove the red, but guess what? No cleaner that I've ever tried does. So it's not a deal breaker. All right, so I wanted to show you what the stamp chamois looked like at the end of all this trial. And you can see it's pretty dirty. 
So I went ahead and took it to my sink in the kitchen and washed it with some Dawn soap. And it did kind of help a little bit, but it's still stained. Now where it was clean, it was very clean. Um, this would bother me, so I'm going to stick with my Gina K towel. All right, now if you don't have an old Cricut mat that you can re-sticky, by the way, I use this two-way glue pen to re-sticky my mats and it works like a charm. Uh, here's my other alternative. So they sell these mats at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. You can cut it down so that it fits inside. The only problem is it won't go all the way to the bottom, but you'll put your tape there anyway, but at least you'll have this usable area to be able to use and stamp from this sticky mat. I would definitely recommend using the mat in here. I know that I'm definitely going to keep it this way and use it just like this. So that's going to stay in this little stamp platform. Another thing that I thought about is using this little holder that you use when you're weeding vinyl off the Cricut. I thought this would be a good place if you don't have a salt cellar, which I really like, <laughs> but I thought these you can find at the Dollar Tree also, and it could be great for this too. Let's do some final comparisons. The Misty's on the left, the Diamond Press is on the right. The Misty's $70, the Diamond Press is $35 with all of the accessories. I think maybe when they release it on its own, hopefully it'll be under 25. The Misty has a six and a half by eight and a half stamping area. The Diamond Press has seven by seven and a quarter. The Misty is eight by 10. The Diamond Press is a little short of eight by eight. The Misty has a magnetic base. The Diamond Press is plastic, not magnetic. The Misty comes with a magnet, foam pad, and paper. Diamond Press comes with the towels, the cleaner, the tool, the tape. Both are, will fit clear and clean stamps. Uh, the Misty comes in three sizes. The Diamond Press comes in one. The lid of the Misty is etched with the grid. The Diamond Press one has a printed grid, so I'm not sure how that will hold up over time. Here are my final thoughts and recommendations, if any. Starting with the washi tape. I found the washi tape to come off the paper without ripping it at all. And I reused it many times. So do I recommend this? Yes, this is a great product. Next is the little pusher tool. Do I recommend this? Absolutely. This is probably my favorite thing. I will continue to use this. And how about the cleaner? Yes, it cleaned the steps and tool perfectly. What about the chamois? They work as intended, but I do prefer the Gina K tidy towel, so I'm gonna stick with that. So oh, do I recommend the tool? Yes, I do. I have to say if the price is under $25, I think this is a great alternative to the Misty. It did everything the Misty did, as you saw in all my trials. I hope this video was helpful in helping you to make a decision about if this tool is right for you. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and let me know what you think in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.